Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the New York Comic Con exclusive DC vs. Dark Horse Green Lantern and Predator figures from NECA. And I'm really excited about this set. I wasn't able to pick this up in New York Comic Con because I didn't go to New York Comic Con. But luckily I was able to pre-order it off the NECA website. And I always hear horror stories about the NECA website. I've never tried to pre-order there before this. But I got really lucky. It was no hassle at all. So it was really cool. And then it came like maybe a week after New York Comic Con so it's not like I had to wait forever so it was a pretty pleasant experience but anyways let's get into it much like the San Diego Comic Con exclusives the DC Dark Horse stuff they put out then the boxes are kind of cheap and weird and they kind of seem rushed but you know who cares about the box but let's open it up real quick take a look at the figures here you could see Hal Jordan with the Jon Stewart head and a bunch of other accessories and then you have this awesome yellow lantern predator nothing over here no artwork nothing like that it's just black on the back it's just black and that's about it you know they didn't really care too much about the packaging and neither do i so let's get into the figures themselves so let's go ahead and start this off with the Green Lantern. And I think this is a really good looking figure. It definitely has that classic Hal Jordan Green Lantern look down. I like the paint job on it. It's very simple. There's really not a lot going on with this figure, but it's just executed almost perfectly. There's nothing really that jumps out to me as bad as, the, as far as like how the figure looks. I think the logo looks great. The paintwork looks great. I like the shading on the figure itself. It looks like there's a couple different shades of green going on. We have some darker greens like in the creases of the muscle and then it gets a little lighter like on the outside of it so that's really nice and I do like the way that NECA sculpts their DC figures so far even though it looks like they pretty much share the same body as you can see here him and Superman almost look exactly the same but you know the way that this is painted because it's a little bit darker in the underarm area and the arms it kind of makes it look like he's not as big as Superman but as far as I could tell they pretty much have the exact same sculpt but it works. I do wish that Hal Jordan was a little shorter than Superman or a little bit smaller, you know, not as muscular. But I think, uh, you know, it works. It looks good. And he does have the power ring on the fist here. There's not a lot of details to talk about aside from, um, you know, the paint job. But yeah, I think it's very well done. And the Hal Jordan head sculpt is very nice. He does have the domino mask with the white eyes. And then there's some black surrounding the actual white part. Everything looks clean and nice. Except for right here, it looks like they got a little crazy with the wash from the hair because it got all over the skin. But it's really not too bad. And I didn't even notice it until I zoomed in with the camera here. For the most part, I think this looks really good. Look at that, that's like a perfect Hal Jordan head sculpt. And not only does he come with Hal Jordan's head sculpt, he also comes with Jon Stewart. And look at that, that looks really nice too. We've got the green eyes going. I do like the haircut too. There's a lot of nice details on this head sculpt. And I really like this facial expression, he looks very focused. And I love the fact that they gave him the green eyes, that is awesome. So this is, a, this is really cool that they included both of these head sculpts. Now I just have to find a way to get an extra Green Lantern figure. We'll have to see about that. But yeah, I think both of these head sculpts are very well done. And as for the Predator, this thing has an insane amount of details. Check this out. We're going to start off at the head here. I just love the way this helmet mask thing looks. Check out the eyes. They kind of have like a grid effect to them. And then the metal pieces look like ancient, but definitely technologically advanced. So that's awesome. Here in the mouth area, we have like some breathing vents, it looks like. And then we have his signature dreads that look really cool. And then back here, he has like his his like shoulder cannon, but it's made from like a construct and it just looks really cool. And I like, it, you know, it's not really like translucent. You can't see through it or anything, but it doesn't look like solid plastic either. So it definitely looks like a piece of energy. And then as far as his armor goes, check it all out. It looks super dope. A lot of nice details on there. Most of it's yellow, obviously, but then there's some like a black wash in there that looks good. We have some metallic looking pieces right here. And I love how like behind all these metal pieces, there's like these wires and things going on, kind of holding it together. It's kind of hard to see because it's all black, but it looks super cool. And then his skin is black with like that net effect on it. So that's nice. And then he has the belt thing that has a bunch of stuff going on. Back here we have some good stuff going on. This all looks good. He has a sword sheath, which is also like a construct. So that's cool. And then his forearm pieces look really nice. We have some wires and things in there. His hands look cool. He has like a little spike poking out of his wrist right there. That's dope. And then on this side you have the ring. Some armor pieces right in here. I'm not too sure what this is for. I couldn't find a weapon to stick in there or anything, but you know, it looks fine. 
I'm really happy with the way this figure looks. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, I love that he has these little hoses, but they're connected to the front part of the armor and then the back part of the armor. It's not connected to the arm at all, so you don't have to worry about damaging those when you're moving the arms. So that is super cool because I've had some problems with um, these tubes on Predator figures in the past. So aside from the Hal Jordan and John Stewart heads, both of these figures come with a lot of really cool accessories. So starting off with the Green Lantern, he comes with two sets of hands. The first one is a set of fists. And then for the other set of hands, he has a fist on his right side that has a little hole in it so you could insert the energy effects. And then for his left hand, he has a gripping hand. And the lantern he comes with is kind of cool, but it's a little warped from being in the packaging. So as you can see, it kind of hangs at a weird angle, but it does look nice. There's nothing wrong with it, really. It's kind of hard to get him to grip onto it, but once he has it, it's not going anywhere. So I probably won't remove it from the grip here, but yeah, I think it looks okay. I just wish it wasn't warped. And then he comes with three different energy effects. The first one is this small little guy that makes it look like the ring is glowing or something. And then the next effect is this star type of burst effect, I guess you could call it. I, I never know what this thing is called, but we often see Green Lantern figures with this type of effect. And this last one is a real long blast effect, as you could see. Check that out fits right into the fist and the way these things work is each effect has a stem I guess you could call it or like a peg <laughs> a stem that you could stick right into the fist there and they stay on there pretty nice they're not going to fall out or anything so that is super cool and this one's awesome look at that bam and the predator also comes with a bunch of cool accessories first off he has two sets of hands the first pair is a set of open hands and then he has a set of gripping hands and he does come with three different weapons that are really cool because they are traditional Predator style weapons, but they're done in this yellow energy form. This thing is awesome, but it's a little fragile. On mine, I have a little bit of stress marks on one of the blades where it meets like the main handle piece. You probably can't see it on camera here, but it's definitely a little fragile, but it does look cool. And it's kind of hard to see the details on there because of the way they did it. But in person, you could definitely see like all the different blades and stuff like that. And then you have the sword, which I like a lot too. Once again, there is some sculpted details on the handle and on the blade itself, but it's all really hard to see. And then you have his traditional spear, which is really cool too. It has like the, the handle part right here, and then it looks like it's like collapsible. It's not, but it definitely has that type of look to it. And he really has no problem holding on to his sword and his spear, but I did have a little trouble finding a good way for him to hold on to his weird predator blade thing. And aside from his other head that has an awesome helmet on it, he also has an unmasked head. And I really like this thing. Check out the eyes. They're kind of hard to see when you're looking straight on. But if you tilt his head back, you could definitely see him in there. And then I really like the teeth. This texture of the skin is really nice as well. I like the different colors, the different shades of brown in there. And yeah, I just really like that. Check out up here where it gets a little bit darker where the hair would come out. Or I don't know if this stuff is called hair, but look at it. It's weird. But yeah, I really like this face sculpt. I love the texture of the skin and the eyes. Those are probably my two favorite parts about this head sculpt. For some quick size comparisons, we have the Predator and Green Lantern alongside the DC vs. Dark Horse NECA Predator and Armored Batman from San Diego Comic-Con. And now we have them alongside the NECA Broken Tusk Predator, which was formerly my favorite Predator figure. But now I think this new Yellow Lantern version is because this thing is just insane. And then we also have the NECA DC vs. Dark Horse Superman. Next, we have them alongside the NECA Laser Shot Predator and and the Mezco 112 Collective Green Lantern. Here we have them alongside the NECA Shape of Water Amphibian Man and the DC Collectibles Batman from the Batman vs. Ninja Turtles 2 packs. And then here we have them alongside the NECA Movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Raphael and the Black Series Boba Fett. Next we have the DC Icons Green Lantern and the DC Essential Superman both from DC Collectibles. And then finally, we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man and Marvel Legends Bucky Cat. And as for the articulation, both figures have a pretty good amount, but we're going to start off with the Green Lantern. He has a pretty basic articulation setup for a 7-inch figure. It has all the standard things, double-jointed elbows, double-jointed knees, ab crunch, all that good stuff. And there's really no surprises here because, as I mentioned, he has the exact same body as the DC vs. Dark Horse Superman, which we looked at a couple months ago. And the articulation is serviceable, but there's nothing mind-blowing. But let's go ahead and take a really quick look at it. His head is able to move side to side. He can look up to about right there, which is okay. He can look down to right there. And then he has an ab crunch that goes forward to right there, which is pretty nice. Check that out. That's okay. And then it could go back to, let's see, about right there. But then you have kind of a gap from the peg in there. But it does go a pretty decent amount. And you could probably get him into some decent flying poses. So that's cool. And then for the arms, you have ball-jointed shoulders that go all the way around. They could come out to the side. 
You have the upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, which is pretty good. Swivel at the wrist, hinge at the wrist. His legs come out all the way to the side which is really cool. As I mentioned, I really like the way that NECA does their hip joints because they're covered by a soft piece of plastic, but it doesn't get in the way of the articulation too much, as you could see. And then he could kick his legs forward to about right there. That's pretty much the only spot where the articulation is hindered because of this piece, but still it gets up a decent amount. Then it comes back to about right there. And then you have the upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, lower leg swivel, rocking ankle, they could come out like that, come forward like that, and then he has toe articulation. So, as I said, it's pretty standard, but I think it works perfectly fine for Green Lantern. And as far as the Predator goes, I was really impressed with the articulation, not because he has anything new going on, but just because how much I was able to move things around. As, when it comes to Predator figures, you really never know what you're going to get because there's always armor pieces, and sometimes they put them in weird spots, and it makes some of the articulation useless. But in this case, they made all the right decisions, and all the articulation is really good and very useful. So let's get into it. His head can move side to side. It is a little hindered by the dreadlocks because they're crazy, but you could just move them around to get them where you want to go. He can only look up to about right there. He could look down to right there, and then he has some tilt, so that is nice. And then for the torso, he has two torso cuts. He has like the mid-torso cut and then a cut at the waist, and using both of them, you get some really good range. Check this out. Bam! That's an awesome crunch for a Predator figure. And then it goes to the side. Let's bring it back up a little bit. Could bring it to the side a really nice amount that's awesome check that out back this way same thing obviously and again this is all soft plastic so it just moves out of the way so good stuff and then let's see how far back you could go i was a little worried about the back movement because of all the stuff we have going on back here but he does get a pretty nice amount back this stuff just kind of moves out of the way, so that is awesome stuff. I was really impressed with the torso joints, and then obviously you have a twist either at the mid-torso or at the waist, so that's awesome stuff. And then for the arms, we have ball-jointed shoulders that go all the way around, and then they could come out to the side. A lot of times with Predator figures that I purchased in the past, they put these shoulder armors right on the shoulder joint, so it makes the shoulder joint pretty much useless. But in this case, you could get his arm all the way up to the side. And then you do have the upper bicep swivel, you have a double jointed elbow, which is really nice, but you have to make sure to swivel the forearm piece to the flat part so it gets the best bend. So as you can see, it bends a nice amount. And then he does have a swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. It's a little bit tight, so you gotta be careful there. And then for the legs, he could pretty much do the splits even though he has all these armor pieces going on on the belt and on the hips and stuff, but you still get some really good movement. You could kick his leg out to the side without any problems. None of these things really get in the way. You could bring him forward a nice amount. And then you could bring him back a nice amount. And then you do have a upper thigh swivel. Double jointed knee. There's no lower leg swivel, but you do have a swivel at the foot. And his foot is on a little ball joint, so you have a little bit of a rocking action. You could bring him forward to right there bring them up to right there. So yeah, like I said, I was really impressed with how much I was able to use the articulation on this figure considering he has so many things going on and it just makes for a really fun figure to mess around with. Okay guys, so overall, I really, really love this set. I think that both figures are very well done. I really like the Green Lantern figure. Even though he's a little plain, it's not really NECA's fault or the figure's fault. That's just the design of the character, but he does come with a lot of cool accessories to make him interesting and he pretty much looks like a perfect classic Hal Jordan Green Lantern. So so, you know, there's nothing really to dislike about it. I just wish the articulation was a little bit more interesting. You know, it's pretty basic, but it all works. So I'm happy with it. And he's a really good looking figure. And I think NECA is just killing it with the DC stuff. Hopefully they find a way to keep it going. Right now, there's a bunch of different companies making DC characters. There's DC Essentials, Mattel. Well, Mattel's kind of fizzling out, but there's Mezco. And pretty soon, McFarlane is going to be giving us DC characters. So I really can't wait to see how the McFarlane figures compare to the NECA stuff because 
McFarlane's doing great things. I think they're going to do a good job with the DC figures, but I just don't know if it's going to be able to top, you know, these figures that NECA's doing. But without a doubt, the star of the show is the Predator. This figure is awesome. I'm so happy with it. I really wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. This It just blew me away. As soon as I took it out of the box, I had so much fun messing around with it. And it's always a pleasant surprise when all of the NECA articulation works really well because, as I mentioned, you never know when it comes to Predator figures. There's usually so much stuff going on, it's hard to tell if the articulation is going to be functional. But it's definitely functional with this figure, and he's just a lot of fun to pose and play with. And I just really love the sculpt. I love all the armor details and all that. He just looks amazing. And also, the accessories that he comes with are great too. I love those. The one thing that's a little bittersweet about this set is the fact that it's an exclusive, because it's really cool that they included a Hal Jordan head and a Jon Stewart head for the Green Lantern figure, but it's kind of a shame because it's going to be really hard to find another Green Lantern figure, you know, without paying a bunch of money. I don't really want to do that. So hopefully, NECA finds a way to get these figures out to stores like Target or GameStop or something. They usually find a way. NECA's awesome with that stuff. So, um, you know, hopefully they do that. And one thing I want to mention real quick is with these two figures, I had no types of QC issues. The Predator, I took him right out of the box, messed around with them, you know, loosened up the joints, and he was perfectly fine. With the Green Lantern, I did have to soak him in hot water for a little bit, but after doing that, no problems at all with the joints, and that's just another pleasant surprise. And I just wanted to mention that because with the San Diego exclusive DC vs. Dark Horse figures, I had a lot of problems, and NECA made all the problems right. They gave me a bunch of replacement parts and everything, and now all those figures are perfectly fine, but it kind of messed up the initial experience of opening the figures and messing with them. That's not the case with these guys. So anyways, guys, I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me as I ramble on and on about these little pieces of plastic that we all love so much. I really appreciate that you take the time to watch these videos and I hope that every one of you guys has a wonderful weekend. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thank you very much. Peace.